the Matrix Studios Network, coming to you straight out of the Bronx, home of the independent and unsigned. Your voice, your network. Yes, we are back here. We are back here on an influential spotlight here at DSN. I am your host, Ms. Mocha Marie. And I'm your host, Miss Mocha Styles. Yes, Hold up. Did we plan this like this? <laughs> no, we didn't. We didn't. We actually didn't. <laughs> okay. It just happened to happen Mo- this way. Mocha and Mocha, huh? And I'm yeah. delighted. And you're in between two chocolates and Which you're vanilla, it? so it's Mocha and Mocha. Right, 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 right. <laughs> so, this everyone knows you're from Philly. Yes, ma'am. You've been making us dance since 2006, six, seven. I would say. You're the owner of Top Notch Entertainment. Right, right. And I want everyone to please join me in welcoming this gentleman to the show. Right. Tone Trump. Put your I'm hands together building. for him. Definitely. I'm in the building. I'm in the building. Better than that. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Hey, bring up there the energy. Go. Bring up the energy. There we go. I came a long way. Wow. Let's, let's go. Yes, definitely. So um, welcome to DSN. Um, definitely. Is this your first time here? Um, this is my first time at this location. I did this station years ago. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm one of the legends of, of this station, DWI, I let you know. But uh, okay. this is my first time coming to this location, so I'm glad to be here. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. Definitely. Um, for those of, for the people that don't know, how long have you been in the music industry? Um, that's a that's a good question. Like, I start really trying to pursue my dream seriously. I want to say in like wait like I was like playing around with it not really knowing you know I you know no clues just you know once you start once you get a rap name you feel like you a rapper but when I say like taking it like serious like as a business and saying like yo this is something I could do to you know feed my family and travel the world like around 08 or 09 I really started taking it super serious and I was blessed with a lot of success yeah okay you know, I did a lot of things before you know you know some of the things I did like in my first year and second year it's dudes that been rapping for 12 years that still ain't do it. So I'm right. very grateful that I was able to, like, accelerate and, you know, build relationships and tour and sell music and do things so early. And, and that's a blessing. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So um, I know I've I met you a, a while ago. You interviewed me for a magazine cover. Yeah, the <laughs> magazine cover for One Music mag- is Life magazine. Wow. Which I was on the cover of. Yeah. You was on the cover. That was actually my first cover story was with Tone Trump. Yeah. Shout so we got history. We have yes. history. And did I did was you at a show I had out of town one time? Yep. I came out there to um Virginia. Virginia. Right. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> yeah. I don't forget nothing. I don't forget exactly. nothing. Exactly. So I don't forget nothing. I was out I was out in the country part of VA. Oh my goodness. And she yes. was out there grinding. With I came me, so out there to support, she definitely. definitely did. And I definitely got that magazine cover. That's one of the covers. If you see, I put it on Instagram a lot. I saw it, yeah. Because my, my mother, she keeps all my covers. Like, she brags about me so much. So every time I go over there, I take a picture and put it up. So yeah. yours is definitely in the and I, and I, every time I see it, I'm like, oh, wow. Like, wow. Yeah, that's that's it it's means amazing. a lot to me. Definitely. And when I met him, um, even during the, during the, that interview, I was saying mm-hmm. I knew he was going to be great. You can just tell Appreciate his presence that. and everything and the, even the music and stuff back there. Appreciate he was that. always fun, you know, and the crowd was very very receptive to you. Oh, they was going, no, say that right. They was going crazy. <laughs> they was going crazy. <laughs> <laughs> they put it in um, yeah, 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 yeah. lighter terms. you like, nah, say that right. Like, right. V- VA, one, VA, one of my main places. I, I, yeah. I, I get a lot of money and a lot of love out there and okay. I, a lot of great relationships and they've been mm-hmm. booking me out there for years. And you're talking about a very... Like desolate. This is in Manassas, yeah, yeah. Virginia, uh, and I, it was packed. Well, that's what I always do. I always, I always pride of myself because people, when people like come to certain places, they always want to mm-hmm. go to the big city. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That's like as much as I do stuff in New York, I still go upstate and get money too. Right. You know what I mean? So you know, I, of course, I get money in Philly, but then I go to Western Pen- Pennsylvania. When I go to Michigan, I don't just go to Detroit. I go to Lansing. I go to Grand Rapids. Yeah. Okay. I go to Gunroo. You know what I mean? I'm going to the yeah. places that a lot of these artists are either scared to go. Or, or they don't think, yeah. or they think they're right. too big to go. Mm-hmm. So either way, or the kids who would want to go can't afford to go. So I get the chance to go there. You know, I go to Martinsburg, West Virginia. There's been times where I got booked out there 20 times in one year. Wow. And a little town like that, these are the same yeah. people coming to see me every single time. Wow. So I appreciate them people, you know what I mean? I could imagine yeah. that feeling because I, I commend you on agreeing to do smaller venues as opposed right. to the big right. venues right. That's well. what it, That's what it's all about because I never would have got the chance like it's like when I started getting my records played on FM Radio Hot 97, I had Flex dropping bombs, and I yeah. still was doing every internet radio show because the reason why Flex and K Slate started to notice me is because 
platforms like this, they gave me my shot. You know what I mean? Like, so it's always for me. I'm going. I ain't really never going to turn down no interview unless I don't got the time or I got to be somewhere else. But they hitting me up right now. I woke up the other day. I had 88 direct messages, and most of them is (laughs) either people trying to book me or talk Mm -hmm. to me. And I'm like, I'm. I want to do everything. (laughs) I don't front. You know what I'm saying? I did like 13 interviews yesterday, like 12 today. (laughs) So it's like. This is what I this is what I signed up for. Yeah, and it gives me a chance to promote my face, my brand, mm-hmm. my music, my films, everything, and, and just to talk my shit, which I love to do, as you can see. Mm-hmm. Are you still part of G Unit? No, Philly? no, 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 no. Because no. I'm just getting to know you, so I'm just right. asking. Right. No, 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 no. Yeah. That, that, okay. that, that's 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 forever ago. That was just something. Okay. Um, Fifty was doing a reality show mm-hmm. on um, artists from Philly, and um, I was one of the artists that was going to be a part of it, but. That was before reality shows really, you know, 50 always mm-hmm. early on stuff. Yeah. That was before reality shows really blown up. And mm-hmm. when we shot the pilot, to be honest, it was so violent and gangster. And it was yeah. just like, they like nobody wasn't going, we Pick couldn't put up. that on TV back right. then. Right. Like, mm-hmm. It was too real for TV. Mm-hmm. Now it would be the number one show in the right. world. That's exactly. what I was going to say. You see but, it now? But, but, yeah. But, but, they but, was, but they that, was ahead of their time. The time. Yeah. That stuff. So even like one of the conversations, I'll never forget, I was on the phone with 50. That sounds heavy too, right? I was on the phone with 50. <laughs> And 50 was like, y'all got to give me, like, statistics so I can justify when I sit down with these suits. I got to be able to say, well, the reason why this guy is going to jail for shooting some lives because where he lives, there's no education, there's no job. He's smart. He was trying to make it Mm. so it wouldn't just look like we was, like, glorifying. Right. You know, we had people like, you know, Mossberg over there, my man who got the Les Wynn shirt on, which is my brand, my brother. Uh He got shot 13 times and survived. Mm. So when somebody hears that, they automatically scared to even stand near him. Yeah. So if you if you are a corporate suit guy, that's something that happened. So we had to explain why these things go down in our community like that, so they can mm-hmm. understand. Like it's not like, you know, we in a war zone. We are not yeah. choosing. You know, what I mean, that's why mm-hmm. we working so hard and praying and working to get up out of them situations, so mm-hmm. we can help better the situation. So that's what that's about. Okay. Okay. So what made you, or what, or who inspired you to start your company, Top Notch? Um. Who inspired me to start my company? I probably, I probably could say my mother, because my mother just was always big on me being a leader, me being a boss. She always would just encourage me, like you know, you you special. You're not supposed to be, you know, I you know I, I never was a follower. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? I, I, that's why I stayed out of a lot of trouble because and if I did get in trouble, it was mm-hmm. my fault. I never was the guy like you know what I mean. You couldn't get me to hooky school. You know what I mean? You couldn't yeah. get me to try weed if I didn't want. I couldn't be peer pressure, so I always was a leader. So when I got into music. Before, when I saw first started, I was just like, I want to have my company. Right. So I was, you know, I tatted the TN on my hands top notch when nobody even knew who Tone Trump was. I just believed in my brand and my company. And that's what I ran with. And, you know, now it's really starting to pay off. So wow. it's a good thing. And even, you know, when I signed a deal a few years ago, I always, it was always top notch. Whoever I was affiliated with is still top notch, too. Mm-hmm. Like, you can't, I'm not going to put my company away for nobody. So anybody I do business with is a partnership mm-hmm. opposed to, just their company, you know what I'm saying? So Top Notch is my company, my label. Got plenty of artists. I got a couple of my artists with me today. And, um, you know, we just working and grinding. Wow, okay. Okay. And I see now um, that you've transitioned, well, not transitioned into, but mm-hmm. grown into acting, and you're in the movie Creed. Creed. Right. And they right. did the thing um, yesterday, right? They, last um, night. They did. We, we got premieres all week and all, all last week and all next week. They did the uh, L.A. one yesterday. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, um. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a big look for me and a big move. You know what I'm saying? Movies is something I always wanted to do. Of course, I co-wrote and uh, financed my own film, West Side Story, which we finishing up now okay. with Taya Simmons and my whole crew. But um, Creed's like a dream come true. You know, I get a chance to be in the biggest movie of the year. You know, they, mm-hmm. they talking Oscars for this movie. Nice, and, you know, yes. And, and, and I got a great role in it. I'm playing myself. So okay. I, get to expose my, I get to expose my brand Easy. to millions Easy. and millions of... You know, this movie come out on Thanksgiving Day. So imagine all these people going to sit down and see my face. And right. what happens is they go look up who he is. You know what I mean? Right. They don't know. Absolutely. You know, I'm never offended. Like, I I want, I want love a new fan mm-hmm. sometimes just as much as a, a day one fan. Because right. a new fan is like, you more even more excited. Like, yo, let mm-hmm. me catch up. So I look at people. It's people that don't even listen to rap that's going to go see Creed. Right. You know that's right. true. So You're right. You're right. It's just going to open up a lot of doors for me. It already is. And it's... uh. This is the first of many films for me, so I'm excited. Good. So okay. you, you liked acting. You I, liked lo- it, I right? loved it. I loved it. I, <laughs> I loved bet it. you did. So great, you ready to do great, another movie? Or what? Are you great, ready? <laughs> great money, great treatment, great food. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the, the vibe is so much different from the business of the rap business. Yeah. You know, dealing, yeah. With a, dealing with a big corporation mm-hmm. like Warner Brother Films. It's different. It's so, I'm, I'm talking about seven star food every day, catered, mm-hmm. you know, assisting on set. Making they, sure that's set like that's serious, right? That's, right? Like, mm-hmm. that's why you see so many rappers, once they start doing movies, they stop really doing right. movies because, you know, you, you sit down for a couple months and you get more money than you do running around the country 
three times, yeah. you know yeah. what I mean? You get to be That's with true. your family, whatever, you know what I mean? You mm-hmm. get to be stationed, and you get treated like royalty. Mm-hmm. And I was blessed to be able to work with some of the most talented people in Hollywood, mm-hmm. some of the most talented young black actors and actresses. Wow. And that's just something I'm so proud of. Like, you know, you can't take that away. Like, you know, to get to work with Michael B. Jordan and Tessa mm-hmm. Thompson. You know what yeah. I mean? To be in a film with Sylvester Stallone. And right. Felicia Rashad, Rashad yeah. my first film. And one thing my lawyer was talking to me about, he said, you know, most people, before they get a speaking role in a big movie like this, they got to be an extra like 20, yeah. 30 times. It's no true. lines. And, yeah. I, yeah. and I didn't have to do that. Like, I'm coming right in, got, a, got lines, got mm-hmm. an action scene. I'm looking so good on that big screen. I can't wait. And the funny <laughs> thing is, oh, you say that. So I look so handsome on that big screen. Somebody like, that's here and went to the premiere yesterday. Honest, oh, really? Yeah, they, they, oh, right here. Oh, and he's out there. He goes, okay. he goes, I'm following him. He's like, I'm following him on, on Instagram. But um, I'm, I'm, you know, was he at the BT Awards? And I, and I said, um, I, I'm at the Global Spin. I said, well, I don't know. And he, and I said, well, um, I was supposed to go with him to the premiere yesterday. I said, what movie did you go see yesterday? He goes, Creed. I said, that's where you saw him at. Right, he's right. in Creed. And he's right. like, oh, that's the way I saw him. Right, right, right. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. So big, the word is already out. It's yes, a big it look, is. Man. So um, was it anything challenging for you, like, um, during the acting a- and absolutely. the Absolutely. I mean, absolutely. It was challenging. It, 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 you know, my, you know, when you when you acting, I chose to do my own scenes. Like, mm. I could have got a stunt double, but just to make my experience better, I wanted to do my own scenes wow. as far as the action scenes. So physically on my body, like, you know Michael B. Jordan, he trained three months like a real boxer mm-hmm. for this. So he came in like in top athletic shape. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm coming in <laughs> off the block, you know? What right, I'm like damn. Like, like never worked out a day in my life. Right. So like when you sitting there and you got to do something for twelve hours a day, yeah. you know what I mean? Like a certain mm-hmm. thing, like you know f- the toll is paid physically, but it educated me, it let me know like yo, if I want to do this, I got to prepare. And it's exactly. funny because the director told me that. When I met with him, he said, "Yo, man, you might, you know, you might want to get in the gym, da, 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 you know mm-hmm. what I mean?" Lightly. And I just, you know, I'm, I'm Philly nigga. I'm like, "Yeah, right, whatever." Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm out here uh-huh. trapping, chasing. I ain't got no time in nobody's gym. You knew when but, you got up there, right? Oh yeah, I learned, and um, you know, just just seeing his excellence and, mm-hmm. and seeing te- Tessa's excellence, you know, it was d- certain things. It was one part we we shooting a scene, and I threw something at her, like I freestyled. I went off the script. The, mm-hmm. the director like whispered to me, like. You could switch it up if you want to say what you would really say in that situation. So uh, she had no clue what I was going to say. Mm-hmm. I threw it out, and she rebuttaled me so perfectly. And I was just like, that's brilliant. That's somebody mm-hmm. who does this for real. You know what I'm You're saying? You're going to be writing soon. Oh, yeah. oh, I'm already writing. I'm already writing. Well, that's what I'm talking about. about. We, 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 already write, we already writing them. You know, like, I got a book coming out, and all my films, I co-write nice. me and Taya write them together. Like, okay, she do okay. the majority, mm-hmm. and she's um she's college educated, so she gives it the, and, and she, she's very creative, so she gives mm-hmm. it, like, the, the, the grown movie well, feel mm-hmm. and then I bring the street to it okay. and I, to make sure everything is just super accurate. It's mm-hmm. kind of like how uh the sister that writes for power and fifth how they work yeah. together. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. So yeah, like, true. they we, we was doing it first, you know what I mean I think but you know shout to Fifth and uh, that sister. <laughs> yeah. I love to see young black writers and directors eat because it just opened doors for all of us. That's mm-hmm. why I'm so proud to work with Ryan Coogler, the director mm-hmm. of Creed, he did Fruitville Station too. So oh, and he's wow. a young black brother. He, I don't even think he's thirty. He might be just wow, thirty. He's like that young. Okay. He out here winning. He inspires me, and you know, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm I'm forever grateful to him because he wrote me in the film. He was a fan of my music. And he he when he reached out to me, he was just like, I hope you. I was hoping you do it. And I'm like, what? Oh, wow. Right. Mean? Creed, Rocky. You know? <laughs> wow. Like sign me up. So the rest is history. Okay. So let's get into your music. Let's get it. Okay. Um, swerve, you, you ready? Swerve, swerve, you focus. Swerve over this. Oh, right there. Okay. Swerve taking a little snack break. We, we already been in here grinding for a couple hours, so you know right. he ain't so in, he in there. Get grub, back into he your he music. Let's get it.